Hi, I'm Bruce Mullen. I'm Nova Emmy. And I'm Mary Bissell. Welcome to The Leading Edge. In this episode, I'll meet a researcher who wants to know why girls who have their whole lives ahead of them choose to destroy their futures with crystal meth. I'll take a look at creative ways to resolve conflict in our multicultural community. But first, in the city or around the farmyard, certain animal species just seem to fit in well with people, like the barn owl. This is the Fraser River Delta, the most important bird habitat in Canada. But this bird-friendly farmland is shrinking. Ten years ago, this roadway wasn't here. Eight years ago, this greenhouse complex wasn't here. By studying the health of certain species of birds, researchers can make educated guesses about how the other birds are being affected by the loss of habitat. For the Fraser Delta, one of these indicator species is the barn owl. In spring, way up in old barns like this, all around this farming region, little baby barn owls are growing and growing and growing on a steady diet of rodents. And they grow so big, they actually get bigger than their parents. Then, they get serious about being owls, they shed that excess weight, grow long, tawny wing feathers, and off they fly. Barn owls like the old wooden barns, with missing boards that act as doorways, and beams that act as perches. And in those old barns, Sophie Hindmarsh likes to prowl about. Sophie is a graduate student at Simon Fraser University. She and her assistant Veronique Connolly are studying the health of the Fraser Delta's barn owl population. What I'm doing right now is I'm monitoring 21 nest sites at different locations in Delta and Surrey, coming on a weekly basis. I follow Sophie and Veronique up to the top floor of a small hobby barn in Surrey. There should be three large nestlings in this nest box. Hi guys. Why is there only two of you? But it seems one has fledged. One's yes. flown already? The bird's from hell. Around between 40 and 50 days, they're not as cooperative when I come and take them out of the nest box kind of hard dealing with them, but at most time it goes, we kind of figure out an agreement and they're happy when they get back into the nest box. Terrasus 91.8. I'm from Norway. I came here last fall. They were talking about this project and I found it very interesting. And uh, especially as it's a project that kind of combines it is biology, but also it's very close connection with, with farmland and, and how people use the lands. After the weigh-in, it's picture time. Smile for the camera. Quickly. Sophie and Veronique continue checking out barns with potential. And the first time I came here, on both sides, there was like heaps of pellets everywhere. While other raptors rip apart their meals, owls eat their prey whole. Pellets are the undigestible remains of voles and small birds coughed up by the owls. It's the best way of finding out what they're eating. Last time I was here, we found remnants of uh, some flickers up there, so that kind of excludes all other kind of animals eating those, like, for example, cats. These are flicker skulls. They're a kind of woodpecker and a favorite prey for barn owls. But most of the pellets are the bones of voles, which are like a mouse, but a little larger. Oh, Outside, we spot an owl circling around the barn. Even the researchers are surprised to see an owl so close during the day. Earl Newcomb's barn was built in the early 30s. And for the last six years, at least, he's had barn owls. Well, we love them. We like to see them come and uh, in the evening and fly around and uh, eliminates rats, mice, and everything like that, and that's great, yeah. A lot of farmers around here, especially those that have dairy farms, see them when they do the morning milking. Most of the people I meet, they're very friendly about them. I'm very proud of having them on their barn. 
Later in the evening, we trek out to a mini barn on Westham Island. This bird-sized barn was built specifically for the owls. A parent bolts as we get closer. So we've got three chicks up there. They've doubled in size since the last time they've seen them, but they're guessing. They're going to take some blood, they're going to weigh it, a few other little measurements, and put them back in, all in about 40 minutes. But it started raining, so they'll skip the bloodletting and just take growth measurements. You ready, Nick? Yeah. Are you big enough for those? Yeah, let's take this one. Okay, um, this is blue. <laughs> we put some non-toxic paint on their head before oh. we band them so that... You know who's who? Yeah. Everybody some... gets a different color? Yeah. <laughs> Looks like a teenage punk, huh? <laughs> there you go. I offer a hand as note taker. 175. 175. That's good. That's almost a tripling our weight from 54 to 175. You can grow fast, don't you? 85. 85, is that all? Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. It went it was 25 last week. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he's, uh, everything's relative, but yeah. he's, he's growing. He looks good, too. Look at that stomach. Yeah. It's pretty bulging. So it's different from other species. These birds are all born at different times. Right? Yeah, she lays, so on average, uh, an egg every two days. It depends on the weather. She can hold off for almost 10 days and then lay another one if the yeah. weather conditions are bad. Yeah. And finally, the chicks are returned to their mini barn. Dusk is the best time to check on the chicks. During the day, Sophie studies their food supply in fields around the nests. Barn owls like medium length grass fields with uh, often a mix of different grass types. Usually what the hay fields would look like in the old days before they were cut so intensively as they are these days. Sophie talks with as many locals as possible about owl sightings. It's gonna be a challenge, sir. And she takes me to one barn where she's pretty sure I can see barn owls in flight in the evening. I wait around for a while, and finally... There's two ways they can hunt. They can hunt perching. Their hearing is extremely good. Then they'll hear the vol underneath the ground and then they'll, they'll go for it. What they also can do is that they'll just carefully just fly very silently one to two meter over the fields. And then when they hear the vol, they'll dive down and catch it. By the end of the summer, Sophie had noticed a decline in barn owl numbers in the Delta compared to the last study 15 years ago. The cause, she thinks, is loss of habitat. And a decline in an indicator species like the barn owl suggests a decline in all species. The colors of the feathers, it's almost like they have this golden look to them with the, the mix of the brown, the dark yellow, and the white. You know, when you go and monitor them every day, you kind of get a bit tired of getting barn owl poop all over you. But still, I mean, they have characters, and they're pretty, pretty funny, and they're, they're all different. So, I mean, I, I'm still pretty fond of doing what I'm doing, and I still like them quite a lot. 